Do you want to be a master yield farmer? No longer reliant on Telegram, Discord, YouTube, or Twitter to find your yields, to find your investment opportunities? Do you want to become someone who can go out onto the internet and search with your very own hand for the best yields across DeFi in just a manner of minutes? The assets you like, the protocols you trust, and the risk reward that's within your favor? Well, you can't. I'm Steven, the Calculator Guy, also the founder of DeFi Dojo Discord, the most knowledgeable Discord in all of crypto. And today we're talking about DeFi Llama Yields. So let's dive in. If you don't know, DeFi Llama Yields is a tool that allows you to search over a hundred different protocols and thousands of yields for the yields that fit your risk reward. You can sort by TVL, assets, attributes, base APYs, chains, et cetera, et cetera, while also seeing a number of different metrics that allow you to do some good diligencing before you invest. Uh, now, what I will say is that while this is a good place to find yields, after you find yields that compel you, you should then do a lot of research on the protocols and the assets thereafter. For example, if you find a very compelling yield on, let's say, uh, Francium, which is a protocol that I actually like, you would then want to go to the Francium Discord, dig around, see if the team is active, see if the audits are good, uh, see if the yields are stable before investing. You wouldn't just look at the yield, think it's great, then go and jump in. You want to do diligence after you find the yields, not stop at the yield itself. All right, uh, without further ado, let's look at some, let's look at some, let's look at this tool. Uh, so this tool shows you, um, when you first jump on, you'll see the pools. The pools are all of the, the different yields you can get sort of comprehensively. It shows you the assets in those pools, the protocol, the chain, the TVL, the APY. And then what I think the first sort of interesting thing is, is the base APY and reward APY. So the difference between base APY and reward APY is that base APY is generally what we consider real yield or yield in the underlying, uh, which means here if, if you're getting a, a yield of, what's, what's a reasonable one? Uh, these are all ridiculous. Let me, okay, well, as an example, if you're getting a 0.15% base APY, that means you're getting uh, USD, a 0.15% APY in, USD, in the USDC XSGD LP, right? Very, very small uh, APY of real yield, and then a ridiculously high 11,000% of reward APY in the balancer token. There's probably an issue there, um, but, but that's why you do the further research after you see it. Okay, let's, let's start to use this tool. Uh, let's try to find a yield on Bitcoin. So let's say I want to yield on Bitcoin. I click Bitcoin, I click confirm. If you want to, conf if you want to include other assets like Ethereum, you could also include that. Uh, let's do that. So let's do Bitcoin and Ethereum and confirm search. So now we're going to see a bunch of yields that include either Bitcoin, Bitcoin derivatives, or Ethereum and Ethereum derivatives. And if we sort by APY, you can see there are some incredibly high APYs, 16,000 on US, oh God, UST uh, wrapped Ethereum on SushiSwap with a TVL of 17,000. At this point, you might think, I know that that TVL is very low. Uh, and if I added, let's say $10,000, $20,000, I would tank the APY um, dramatically. So, uh, so <laughs> probably at this point, you would not be interested in that. You want to know, how can I sort that out? Well, you would go to TVL, and maybe you only are interested in uh, protocols that have a TVL of at least half a million. So one, 500, 500,000. Um, I usually don't put a max because more TVL is usually an indicator of more security. So uh, I leave that blank. But you can do, you if you wanted to max TVL, you certainly could. And now we, we still get some really interesting yields, uh, APE being quite volatile today, uh, and wrapped Ethereum showing an interesting yield uh, at the moment on Uniswap V3. But let's say you don't actually want exposure to APE. You only want exposure to Ethereum, wrapped Ethereum, or Bitcoin and Bitcoin derivatives. So what you would do then is go over to attributes and do no impermanent loss because you don't want to be exposed to other assets. You only want to be exposed to either Bitcoin or Ethereum. So you can click that. Also, if you want, you can do stable outlook, uh, high confidence. High confidence is, is confidence in the protocol. 
Um, stable outlook means that the yields are probably going to be relatively decent uh, or, or not super crazy volatile. No outliers will, will knock things down that seem you know totally anomalous and, and probably um, a little bit silly. Um, audits, all most of these are going to be odds, but let's go ahead and click on audit. Million dollar is TVL, so at least a million dollars of TVL. Uh, single exposure is going to be just one asset, so you're only going to have one asset in there. Uh, there's not going to be any stable LPs. It's like wrapped staked Ethereum, wrapped Ethereum. It'll only be one asset that you're like depositing into into a lending protocol, as an example. So, all right here now we're sort of getting more realistic yields, I might say. Uh, here we have um, ST ETH in the LP. Uh, you get a APY of 28%. 4.7 of that is base APY, not bad with a 24% being reward APY in the Pendle token. This is kind of interesting. Third day APY is higher, so we can see that there is a declining 30-day uh, yield. You can see through this red chart here as well, that kind of indicates that we're dealing with a yield that's on a downward slope. <clears throat> we have an interesting upward slope with Moonwell Artemis, might be worth looking into, 704,000 TVL. But I might think, okay, why is Moonwell Artemis seeing uh, an increase in TVL? Is it that they're trying to recover from some sort of uh, nomad bridge exploit is it uh, because their their incentives have just gone way up why is this apy so high that's why the research comes after right find the yield you're interested in then do the next step of research sort of off the llama in the discord on twitter on the protocol itself maybe in dune analytics wherever it might be platypus finance btcb okay do i want exposure to btcb if so let's look at platypus finance 1.4 million TVL, interesting. APY 22%, interesting. Uh, green 30-day average, also kind of interesting. Uh, being paid in PTP and wrapped AVAX, not the worst assets in the world. Now I'm going to click on this yield because I'm kind of interested in it, and I want to see sort of how it looks. The pink here is the APY historically since sort of September. You can see how it's going pretty strong. I mean, 10% on Bitcoin, that's, that's a good yield. Uh, if it just stayed here, I'd be happy. Has it gone up? Yes, it has. Uh, but it's sort of gone down ever since the beginning of December. Uh, if it levels off again around 10%, you know, that to me is within my risk reward. Uh, the the TVL has sort of been going down since, since September at a, you know, quite low now. This could be because people are, are less inclined to have exposure to rep Bitcoin assets. Could be for a number of reasons. So this is kind of interesting. Again, this is a starting point for me. This is not the end-all be-all, um, but I'll say it, it does pique my interest. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so you can also sort by the type of protocol, whether it be a liquid staking protocol, a CDP, which is over collateralized assets, uh, lending, DEXs, derivatives, plenty of things to choose from um, for, for you to, to go through. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, that's sort of the, the fun that you get to have on your own. And also this would make this video like a, hour long video, which I don't think you want. You can also click show seven day base APY, uh, which is quite useful because then you can sort of, sort of see like what has the APY been for the past seven days. Base though, again, is the, the real yield, sort of organic yield. Okay, uh, awesome. Let's see, is there like a high base APY? STE ETH on Uniswap V2, neat. Okay, I digress. Let's look at Delta neutral. So there needs to be some explaining done for delta neutral. Delta neutral does not mean this is like a stable coin yield. What it means is you're going to run a strategy and the strategy is going to use one token as collateral. Now you will have long exposure, long exposure, long exposure to the collateral asset where the strategy is going to be delta neutral itself. So if you were doing a Bitcoin collateral, you would have a long exposure to Bitcoin but the yield you're getting is going to be on a number of assets that, that you are delta neutral exposure to because you're borrowing them. Let's look at an example to help clarify. Again, we'll do Bitcoin. Um, I think Bitcoin's a fun one. Uh, so here you can see you're collateralizing, you're collateralizing Bitcoin, you're borrowing USDC on granary, and then you're getting a yield on Seabridge. Now, Seabridge may not be within your risk reward. You may know that uh, Seabridge uses a variety of different bridge protocols and gives you a variety of different bridge risk uh, exposures. So perhaps what you might do is go down to project here and you would type in Seabridge and you would uncheck Seabridge uh, to, to clear that out and see only what's left. Or perhaps 
you know, you don't want exposure to Iron Bank because you know they have some bad debt, even though they seem to be recovering. You might click uh, the the lending project, go to Iron, and unclick Iron Bank. You have that ability to filter to to in a way that shows you only what you're really looking for, which is why I think this is such a robust tool. Now, uh, down here, you have Sun Finance, Seabridge. Maybe what you're looking for um, is something with a lot of farm TVL. So you're gonna go to TVL perhaps and say you want something with at least 100,000 TVL, 100,000 TVL, and still you're looking at Wing Finance sort of leading the pack here. Uh, there's plenty available to borrow. That's important because if you don't have a lot available to borrow, then that either means that you will not be able to run your strategy uh, or that if you borrow, you're going to shoot the utilization ratio so high you may kill the yield. So the APYs here are quite neat. You have uh, now collateralizing um, Pren BTC, borrowing PUSD, and then getting a yield on wing finance on USDC. Now, it should be noted that you can hover over the strategy APY and see the breakdown. Here, the supply APY is incredibly high uh, at 154%. Most people would probably stop there and not actually run a strategy for the extra 7%. Probably not worth it to them. Uh, the borrow APY is negative 3%, which means you're paying negative 3 to borrow that USDC, and then you're getting a 10% yield on that USDC. So you might think, okay, the supply APY, probably not very realistic, probably not very long-lasting, but noted. Now I understand why Wing is there. Maybe you filter out Wing because you think these APYs are highly inflated because the supply APY is so high right now temporarily. And you can do that, uh, which is really cool. So there are you can also exclude bad debt. Uh, you can exclude deposit lockups in case you don't want to lock up your assets as collateral and not be able to get them out immediately if there's a black swan event. Maybe you do million dollar TVL instead. And then you can sort by, <clears throat> you can sort of see Euler. I think it's pronounced Euler like the mathematician. Uh, you could collateralize wrap Bitcoin, borrow ST ETH, go on Pendle, get a ST ETH yield. The strategy APY is 25%. You're getting paid 4.45% to supply. Uh, you're paying, you're actually getting paid, I think, 0.15% to borrow. Uh, ST ETH, and then you're getting a roughly 30% yield on that ST ETH total strategy at 25%. Now, it's important to note that these are considering the max LTV uh, here being 88%. You probably don't want to borrow at max LTV because you're, you're putting yourself at risk of liquidation. So most likely you would reduce this LTV, let's say down to like 50%. Uh, and so this, this strategy APY would be down to like, I don't know, 15, 16%. But a 15, 16% APY on, on wrap Bitcoin uh, using a protocol with millions of dollars of TVL may be within your risk reward. And now you know where to find it. Now you know how to start doing some additional research. So this is a really cool, really cool tool. Um, and of course, you could also use it for stable coins. Uh, so if you want to do like USDC as an example, you could do USDC as a collateral. You're going to see a lot of the usual suspects here. Um, strategy APYs, good percents, good TVL, using Badger DAO, using Pendle. Uh, Pendle really doing a lot of farm awards right now. Check out my Pendle video if you'd like to. Sion uh, <clears throat> also has some great loop strategies, automated loop strategies using Benchy. Um, Burrow, I will say Burrow loops uh, may not actually allow you to loop. So um, we're going to talk about that in a second here. But all things to consider. Very, very cool tool. This is probably my, my favorite feature on DeFi Llama yields, even though I think that the tool itself is, is very robust uh, and interesting. Okay, you can also sort by available. Let's say you want to make sure that there is at least 30,000 uh, USDC or 30,000 USDC value to borrow. You can do 30,000 and you can see it's going to sort out uh, quite a few of those and now we're down to uh, a completely different set of yields. Okay, let's go to leveraged lending. Leveraged lending is just looping. If you're familiar with looping, then you understand how this works. You can zoom in here. Basically, you're depositing an asset, let's say wrap Bitcoin. You're going to borrow that same asset, wrap Bitcoin, uh, and then add that as collateral. So let's say you collateralize 10 wrap Bitcoin. You then borrow five wrap Bitcoin. You add that to your collateral. Now you have 15 wrap Bitcoin. And because you're getting paid, right, a, a lender's yield to, uh, to collateralize that, you're now getting paid 15. Uh, you're getting paid for 15 wrap Bitcoin as collateral instead of 10. So now you've leveraged up your position 
to 1.5x. You know, your 1.5x leverage on that yield. And then you could borrow maybe two Bitcoin, collateralize it, then borrow one Bitcoin, collateralize it. So now you're getting a yield on 18 uh, Bitcoin instead of 10. You're almost 2x leverage on your yield. You might even be getting paid to borrow in some cases. All right. Uh, now, again, caveat, I do believe borrow does not allow you to loop. Um, so I would, but that's what this is for, right? It's, you, it's a starting point of research, not an end point. So then you would go to, to borrow and see if these loop APYs are actually possible. Uh, I, I am unsure if they are. So you can sort by chains, you can sort by project. Uh, again, you can uncheck projects that you're not interested in. You can do stablecoin loops only if you want to. You can see some decent USDC loops on Wing Finance on the Ontology chain, also on the Binance Smart chain. Uh, DeForce with USX looking pretty good at 23%. Plenty available on all of these. You can sort of uh, sort by availability if you want to. You can uh, sort by the amount already borrowed. This is a pretty good indicator of, of where some, some reasonable yields might be. Just lend a good yield on USDD. Don't know if I'd want to be exposed to USDD right now. Despite it being an interesting asset, right? Like 83% collateralized by USDC and Bitcoin, and then like 100 and something percent collateralized by the uh, TRX asset. Uh, but it's off peg right now, so you know there's a bit of concern there. Um, anyways, really good place to find interesting loops. I will say loops can turn against you though. If your borrow APY uh, all of a sudden increases higher, like your what you pay the the interest on your borrow increases higher than the interest you're being paid on your loan, then now your APY is negative. And if there are fees to enter and exit, and now you're dealing with a negative APY, that's a it's a, it's a bad way. So you want to learn more, go in the Discord, see what the the, the outlook is for these yields. And um, I will say uh, loops can be uh, spicy, <laughs> to say the least. Next is borrow. This is just a cool tool where you can go and see where the best place to borrow an asset. Let's say I want to borrow ETH. I want to get a yield on ETH. So you, you click on ETH, confirm search, and then you sort by net borrow. And you see, okay, I can get paid 32% uh, to borrow ETH. Now, it's very important that you understand borrow base and borrow reward. Why? Because borrow base is what you're paying to borrow. So even though it says 32% paying you, you're actually paying 2.49% in Ethereum uh, to borrow that. You're getting paid, you know, 35% in whatever asset uh, Nitron has. I don't even think they have their asset out yet. So really wouldn't trust that. Um, the next one you can see, uh, very similar, you're paying 0.92%, then you're getting paid 4% in uh, in the clap asset. So down here, you know, you're paying 6%, you're getting paid 6%, so it's about break even, uh, but you're getting paid in MFAM, you're paying in, in wrapped Ethereum, is that within your risk reward? So it's a cool tool to sort of see how these yields work, where these yields are, and, and what makes the most sense within your own personal risk reward. All right, let's go to overview. Overview is just a DeFi uh, overview. We can sort of see the trends in yields. You can sort as well. Let's say you just wanted to see the uh, the trends in, let's say, I don't know. Um, uh, are there any uh, leverage farming? You want to see how leverage farm yields have been. Well, they're sort of showing the same thing. Um, I, I'm not convinced this actually adjusts to to any of these, uh, but they have filters there. I believe that they will work um, in the future if, if they're not working now. Here we have one day chains. This is a pretty cool chart actually. You can see um, if you're really, really into the analytics here, how have the yields changed since yesterday? What's trending up? What's trending down? Right now you can see GLP trending down, uh, Lido, ETH trending up, Dai USDC on curve trending up. That's good to see. But that also means that there's a lot of volatility because there's people are using the Dai USDC curve pool. Generally, when there's a lot of USDC swap, or a lot of stable swaps, that's an indicator that uh, there are some there's some turbulent times in, in DeFi. So you can get kind of a grasp of what's going on in DeFi yields by looking at this chart. Uh, for more advanced DeFi users, this can be kind of interesting. But for the lay DeFi user, this is probably not going to be a tool they they come to often. More analytics, uh, more sort of just charting and tools and and, and visualizations of trends. Uh, I'm going to go to projects next and then come back to stable coins because I want to say for, for the new DeFi user, for people who are, who are sort of 
uh, brand new or brand spanking new or right into the space, you might want to go to projects first to sort of get a hold of or get a hang of or understand what the top protocols are. So we can sort of sort by, I mean, it's already sorted by TVL, but you can sort by TVL here, see, okay, what are the expected APYs for these top uh, top protocols? You know, 8% on, that's really good, 8% on Lido, uh, 3%, 3% all single digits, maybe uh, uh, an exception with GMX, so maybe you want to go research GMX now as a new user, but you can see that you're not getting crazy high yields on the top most trusted protocols in DeFi, right? You're getting, you know, much more reasonable yields in the, in the single digits and very low double digits. Um, then there's Halal. Uh, so assalamu alaikum for all my uh, Muslim brothers. Uh, they have, I, I'm Christian, but you know, uh, they have a Halal section. I don't know why, but it's cool. It's neat. I don't know. It's, uh, it's, I don't know what what qualifies a protocol as being halal, but it does exist though. If you're interested in checking out which protocols are halal, uh, certainly you can you can use that tool. Um, I, I get a kick out of whenever I see it. I'm not sure why there's a tab there, but uh, they do have a halal tab. So stablecoin pools, you can search here for anything stable. I think a lot of people are probably gonna use this tool because they're interested in stablecoin yields or delta neutral yields. Uh, so here you can sort buy stables, very, very similar tool to the, the original pools yield. You can see 30 day average, 30 day average chart, reward APY here, um, base APY. You can do categories. So maybe you want only CDPs, which are over collateralized stable coins. You can do attributes. Uh, so high confidence, maybe something you want in a stable coin protocol because you're not looking for crazy yields. You want confidence in those yields. Uh, sort by APY for the high confidence pools, 20% dollar frax BP. Then you think, okay, hold up. Let me now look into these assets. Am I comfortable with DALA? Which, which the protocol, you know, the asset has some bad debt involved, uh, or FRAX, which has partial algo backing. Like you need to understand the underlying assets. You can't stop at seeing the yield, knowing it's a stable coin and aping in. You should understand the assets you're investing in. So again, this is a starting point, not an end point. Uh, LUSD, right? Cool, cool asset. Do you understand it? Do you know, do you know how LSD works? LSD, LUSD works. Do you understand the stability pool? Do you know that it's been uh, habitually overpeg? Um, or do you understand chicken bonds, part of the ecosystem? All, all these things are things you should look into uh, when looking at these yields, right? So this is pretty cool, uh, very neat tool for to find stable coin yields. I think it's it's uh, incredibly robust and and worth looking into. So. One of the things that DeFi Llama recently did is they they only show uh, like accurate yields. Um, so some protocols, if you realize your yields, uh, force you to take a 50% haircut on those yields. Uh, Radiant being one example. So what they've done is if they show you Radiant yields, they're gonna show you post haircut. Uh, so they're showing you what you can realize today if you were to actualize those yields. I think that's a really, really cool um, thing that they've done and they they've did it over the weekend, I believe. Uh, so uh, proud to sort of announce that for them. Not proud, I had, I had no role in it, but I'm happy to announce it for them. Uh, so so that's it, guys. I, f I hope that this video will enable you to become a competent yield farmer, a uh, competent yield researcher, and to feel confidence now in your ability to go out and find reasonable yields within your risk reward, within your risk tolerance, that uh, on assets you like with, with protocols you feel comfortable with. That was the goal all along. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to discuss these yields, if you want to talk to people who, who understand these yields, if you want to be around like-minded DeFi individuals, please do join the DeFi Dojo Discord. 30-day free trial. If you don't like it, leave without ever paying a dime. The price is going to increase on January 1st, we've been saying this for a while. If you want to lock in the current price now, forever, in perpetuity, just start your trial before January 1st, um, and you will you will forever have the lower rate. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day.